And now I'm going to do something crazy. I'm going to turn my paper right around and then see if that can't be my trees. It's not uncommon that I will turn my paper and see something new and that it's a fun way to change gears. Hi, I'm Angela Fair. Today I'm going to demonstrate for you a painting that's been in my head and I've been struggling to get it out on paper. In fact, I've painted this scene four times before this particular version of it. And so we're going to talk about that. I'm going to show you the four failed paintings because I think often people think artists just make perfection every time and that's really not the case. We need to develop our work through experiments, through studies, through explorations into our subject so that we can paint it confidently and expressively. I'm going to show you how I do that today. I'm hoping that it helps you as you think about your own creative process. Make peace with however you use your creativity, have a little fun with it, and it's amazing what emerges in that, in that process. Members of my Fearless Artist community, which you can sign up for at learn.angelafair.com, get access to the behind the scenes, the development pieces, and a little insight into how those, those were created as I work towards this final version. Uh, nothing's ever a final version. There's always another great painting around the corner, and I'm just so excited to see what comes off my brush every time I paint. Often when artists paint, you'll see the finished product, the perfection of something that looks inspired and that it just sprang to life without any planning or, well, maybe with some planning and it just, it, but it just happened naturally and beautifully and just was easy. And it doesn't actually work that way, at least not in my studio. Yesterday I started painting, I had a vision in my head and I could not get it out on paper. Uh, I started with this version, uh, working to paint the fall foliage, distant trees. Uh, I tried something else. I tried something else. I tried something else. Every single one felt like it was missing the mark. And what happens for me is that I'm trying to grow my skills and paint better Every time I paint, I always want to grow and be uh, challenging myself and painting uh, something that shows who I am right now, where I'm at. But the problem with that is you can't plan inspiration. It has to come on its own. We don't get to predict whether or not something's going to turn out. And if I, if I wanted to always play it safe, I, I think I could do that but I'm looking for a feeling. I'm looking for this sensation of finding myself in my paintings. And I'm gonna paint until that happens. And it's a little bit scary because I don't always know what that's gonna look like. And when I do what I think is gonna work and it doesn't work out, um, there's a little bit of a lost feeling that happens. And so here I am. Now, what I was thinking as I looked at these four versions that I struggled with is with each one, they all had commonalities. I was working with the same colors. And so today we're gonna to blame the colors and we're going to divert. We're gonna move away from those colors and see if that can't spark something that maybe will be more, more like me. So I'm gonna start with quinacridone gold today instead of the Aussie red gold I've been using. By changing my colors, um, I think I'm gonna have a little bit more uh, something it's just gonna be a little fresher and maybe that's gonna be the spark that I need color is frequently for me uh, an inspiration frequently I will find in those colors the excitement that I'm trying to convey in my paintings so let's see if we can't do that again I try not to wait too long before I get a lot of paint on the paper by quickly, rapidly filling the page. Um, I commit myself. Okay, so this is hematite violet. Trying something different. Doesn't look very violet, does it? But it's very textural, so we'll see where that takes us. The hematite colors, hematite's an amazing mineral, and you can really see the texture as the color settles into the paper. And I'm liking the hematite violet. I'm going to make it a little more violety by adding some moon glow. And at this point, I'm only loosely connected to that original inspiration insight. 
and I want to stay loose. I'm, I, this is the first painting I've done today, so it's also qualifying as a warm-up. Um, I'm hoping that my warm-up will be inspired by the subject matter of yesterday, but again, it's a warm-up. It's my chance to fill some paper with color. The Moon Glow and the Hematite are a nice pairing. And now I'm going to do something crazy. I'm going to turn my paper right around and then see if that can't be my trees. I tricked you, didn't I? Uh, I often actually, actually it's, it's not uncommon that I will turn my paper and rotate and see something new and that it's a fun way to change gears. Um, this is burgundy red ochre. In our exploration of color I want to use more earths and rusts uh, today and see if that doesn't help get away from the kind of neons that I was using yesterday. Oh, that little flick of the brush gave some really nice little watermarks. I'm not getting like a rich saturation that covers. I'm trying to pay attention to the qualities of the color and then work them into my painting. Uh, I've got some really nice diluted bits of the burgundy red ochre, but I want some darker values as well. That hard flick gives me some directional movement. It also puts paint on my shirt. <laughs> the moon glow is just beautiful up here. And I love this yellow um, giving us that feeling of light coming through the trees. This is feeling better. I want to add some green. I'm feeling like undersea green will be a good option. Undersea green has um, a duality as it starts to dry. Often you see uh, some yellow undertones. Really bringing in a new color, I'm working to uh, blend it in, kind of, make it fit with the rest of the painting by doing the same things that I was doing with the other colors. So flicking a bit, using some of the same movements of my brush, and that gives uh, that unity, creates some rhythm so that it doesn't feel like an outsider, an intruder into the painting. Frequently when I paint brush strokes that I don't care for, I don't immediately blot them up. If that's your practice, I would encourage you to spend uh, a painting session uh, periodically without that paper towel in your hand. Rather than going to erase and try to backtrack, continue, continue moving forward. You can do that by diluting the color and spreading it out, softening edges rather than just trying to erase. Uh, more moon glow. This is echoing what's up happening at the top of the painting. Um, and one thing I haven't done that I should be doing more is just pulling back to look at my painting with fresh eyes, see it from a distance. My tendency, and I know this about myself, is to get too busy with my marks. So I want to resist that urge. Just pause. I'm looking at the painting through the viewfinder of my camera. It really does such a good job of showing me the painting from almost an outsider's perspective. Adding a little dark band here to kind of echo the little dark splash there. I'm sprinkle a little bit of salt. Um, foliage, trees, 
working with these kind of brush shapes, it, there's a part of me that wonders if I shouldn't be showing you something fresher, something really, really new, but I'm not there today. Today I'm taking a subject that I've painted before and finding more in it, looking for what else can I dig out of that. And I love seeing that this subject that I've worked on in the past, it's not exhausted yet. There's still new things that it has to teach me. Working some line here gives that feeling of twigs and sticks. The foliage I want to suggest. I've done this whole painting with a single brush and really just a handful of colors. We started with the quinacridone gold, we brought in the hematite violet, then the moon glow, um, the undersea green and the burgundy red ochre. Just spattering fresh water on can really create edges and texture, especially in some of these dual, dual colors. The moon glow is really seeing uh, that texture there. I think I'm going to make take one more risk. Uh, I'm going to make those dark trees uh, just have a little bit more mark making happening up here to finish off the painting and give it some some kind of bold, expressive impact. That's a great shape right there. <laughs> it's got a lot of personality. I am inspired by artists who create beautiful intuitive marks. My favorite watercolorist for mark making is Sung Suk Hong Set and she has a book called The Spirit of the Brush and it's just a beautiful little gallery of beautiful marks. Uh, she has some background in Chinese brush painting and Chinese brush painting is fascinating because they're very structured. There's a lot of rules, disciplines in it, and yet she's used it to create a very modern mark making painting style. You know, if you've got some really heavy marks, they can actually feel heavier by surrounding them with some of those lighter, more eloquent or graceful marks. And so we use that as a tool and a lot of it is just a kind of developing your taste and your instincts over time. Our instincts actually say that a thin line crossing a thick line is more pleasing than two thick lines crossing each other. Um, we don't necessarily realize it, but you know it's something that we tend to kind of almost instinctively adopt as we grow our skills and grow better at showing our good taste in our paintings. I just want to pause for a moment and talk about mindset. If you are painting with the goal of creating a perfect painting, creating something that you can show off or sell or um, put on your social media as you know this new great painting that I've just done, it can be a real just demoralizing feeling to have a painting that doesn't turn out. If your goal is perfection, uh, it's a struggle. And what I've found is I never fail if I've changed my goal and I refra reframe my mindset so that my goal is enjoying the process, getting absolutely the most fun out of painting that I possibly can. If I really um, become attuned to the painting and use my favorite colors and brush marks that make me happy and just play then whether or not the painting turns out is secondary because the process itself was so fun. It was an escape from the pressures of everyday life. And that to me is really worthwhile. And then it's even more rewarding when those paintings turn out to be something that you can show as being truly from your heart uh, and truly an expression of who you are deep inside. So that's my goal for painting. I would encourage you to look for ways to make that your goal as well. There's a marvelous piece of writing by Ira Glass where he talks about how as artists, before we ever start painting, we still have good taste. We, we know what we like and we can take that 
as we develop our skills, we're better able to show that. Um, our good taste is there, even though when we're learning a new skill, uh, learning our creative discipline, it's often not very visible. And uh, that was really encouraging for me, not even as a new painter, but as a painter who'd been painting for, I don't know, 10 or 15 years. And I think that would be an encouragement, should be an encouragement for you too. I'm just going to brush off the salt here, <laughs> those bigger chunks of sea salt. Sometimes I grind them up between my fingers. Um, and when I don't, you can see they really create a texture in this area that kind of is standing all on its own right now. I've been, I've waited several hours for this to dry and there's actually still a little dampness hiding in this area. You can see how it's buckled. Uh, these are things I pay attention to. It helps me to know uh, whether or not I can touch brush to paper. So I am gonna do a little bit more just detail work at this stage. It's interesting because there's a lot of blue showing in here, even though I didn't use any blue in this painting, but there is blue in the moon glow that uh, comes out as that color flows. And the longer a color takes to dry, and this area took a really long time to dry, the more we see those unique qualities. If you have a pigment that separates and granulates as it dries, it's gonna do that more and more the longer it takes, the, the longer you allow it to stay damp. Um, I'm going just to the undersea green now, pulling some of that in. And I'm letting my brush be weird like this because that's going to give me some unpredictable leaves. Oh, I kind of like that. And a little wiggly path of green foliage looks good. These little detail strokes, you don't need a lot of them, but they really finish off a painting. And give it just that little final hard edge detail that we want to place around our focal point areas. Or I shouldn't say focal point because I think that's a that's an overused word that is all, not always understood. I'd rather rather describe it as the visual pathways. Where does the eye travel? We have lots of dark here. So if I can put some little dark um, shapes in here, I can actually guide my viewer right down to the lower part of the painting and then hopefully back up towards the trees again. And layering just a little bit towards the end. You know, I talked about wanting to do things in one la layer, but coming back and doing that final little splash of dark value, crisp edge, really can add just a little bit more. I'm gonna stop. I don't think I need to continue further. Now I talked about having a vision in my head for what I wanted to paint and then also needing to reconcile that with what was happening on the paper and I think I've done that here and it was really enjoyable and that's actually something I look for is how do I feel as I'm painting? Am I in tune with the painting or am I worried about matching my own internal vision, the expectations in my head, pleasing other people, creating something for a show or something that might please somebody else. Um, that's a, those are other things that add pressure and generally stifle my creativity. But if I'm painting with the goal of just being here to enjoy the painting, to maximize my joy, I get success whether or not this is something I wanna show anybody. Uh, so that's, that's what I aim for. And that's what I'm seeing has happened and occurred in this painting. Uh, and that's going to propel me to the next one and to be better at being in tune to those feelings anytime I'm painting.